Hey all, Hiba here and welcome to yet another video on Everspace 2 and actually also a little bit Starfield here because in this video I'm going to tell you why Everspace 2 is such a better game than Starfield is. Because uh, obviously we have to look at the space aspect of the game because Starfield has, you know, the on foot aspect which obviously uh, cannot compete with here because it's not in Everspace. But if we just look at the space part of Starfield, well, then I can assure you that if that's what you're looking for, then Everspace 2 is the game you should buy, not Starfield. Now, if you're thinking, hey, the first Everspace was kind of ho-hum, so uh, what's he on about? And yeah, you're right, it was a little bit, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't good. But I'll tell you, Everspace 2 is a completely different game and uh, it sorted all the little problems in Everspace 1 and it is, in my opinion, probably the best example of this genre here. And uh, that's saying a lot, people. Now, the biggest difference between Everspace and Starfield is that in Everspace, there's actually things to do in space. There's Heaps of things to do, thousands of things to do, so many missions, so many upgrades, so many levels to get. It's actually almost crazy. So uh, if grinding, you know, spaceships, a little bit like Diablo in space is your thing, well, uh, Everspace 2 is a must buy. The galaxy of Everspace 2 just feels so much more alive than the one in Starfield because you're completely free, you can go wherever you want and it's not all about just loading from one uh, loading screen to the next like Starfield is in space, let's be honest here, right? Look, this is the real deal, it is as close as you're gonna get to the perfect space game that includes everything from trading, upgrading, customization, combat, exploration, whatever you want, it's in this game. And uh, I don't think this game has received enough accolades because, trust me, it is deep and it's wide and uh, it's, well, I think it is my favorite game at the moment. It has just completely sucked me in and uh, I just can't let go because it's also a very long game. Like the grind needed to improve your ships, improve your weapons and everything is uh, is ongoing. And if that's not enough, there's also rifts and stuff once you actually sort of finish the game. The game's galaxy is also massive. There's plenty of systems, plenty of planets and moons to visit. And every time you travel, you're gonna, you know, bump into undiscovered sites or derelict spaceships or so many different things in space that's always, always worth investigating. And as you can tell, it's a huge game. Like it'll take many, many dozens of hours to get through it. And it's always interesting. Like it doesn't turn into a slog. Like let's be honest, Starfield does. It's a lot of grinding, but Starfield doesn't make the grinding fun. Everspace 2 makes the grinding not just fun, but exhilarating and you know something that you really cannot wait to keep doing and uh, traveling between places in Everspace 2 is so much better than Starfield because you actually get to fly between your destination and your origin and uh, once you're doing that uh, there's no telling what kind of stuff you'll find along the way because you can deviate from the route at any time if you see an unknown signal like here on the way there's nothing stopping you from simply uh, disengaging from your original target and moving on to whatever it is that you have found. This very cool exploration concept just keeps the game fresh constantly and uh, you never know what is going to show up at one of these destinations here. And of course this being a very grindy game there's a lot of uh, resources to gather. For example crystals that you will find at uh, like a random spot like this or asteroid fields or you know that could be anywhere really and uh, it's a lot of fun and uh, it's fairly simple to just pick these things up. Even uh, if you just show up somewhere that's fairly empty there's always a container to loot or something along those lines that makes it worth your while and uh, sometimes the game actually presents you with puzzles that can actually be quite difficult. Uh, where you have to solve uh, like a few um, like 
setups in a certain uh, situation and uh, you will then uh, get access to some excellent loot and some experience points and stuff like that. The game also lets you interact with your environment in different ways, especially a lot more than Starfield does. But you can actually pick up stuff and move it to, uh, you know, solve some of the more uh, difficult puzzles. Because there are some difficult puzzles in this game here. And yes, it is a space game with puzzles. And that's partly because not all game actually takes place in space. Uh, sometimes, actually a lot of the time, you'll be flying inside asteroids, inside planets, you know, over the surface of planets uh, while you're digging for secrets or, you know, running missions or whatever it could be. And uh, the controls are just excellent. I have, to, uh, I have to really mention that in this video here because you never lose control. It's, uh, it's very well balanced and uh, such a far cry from uh, Starfield's uh, pretty haphazard stuff. The sets you'll come upon are also amazing. Like you're flying around right next to hulking space wrecks that you can spend many, many uh, you know hours looting and uh, exploring, and uh, it's just a great experience. It really is. Combat is fast, furious, action-packed, and also very deep. Because, like I said, you can modify your ship in a billion ways, and uh, of course. Leveling up is the whole point of the game. You gotta level your ship so you can take on more dangerous foes, so you can take on better missions and you can get better loot. And uh, of course, uh, better ways to upgrade that loot because that is a huge part of this game here. You just, you just don't find stuff and that's it. It's just like Diablo. Uh, you can keep upgrading it, you can keep doing stuff to it and you can, uh, you can pretty much keep it <laughs> all through the game. So uh, how many spaceships are there, you ask? Well, there is a lot. There's different types, and each type of spaceship has multiple subtypes, and uh, you can also uh, modify them even more than that, but we'll get to that later. And uh, of course, each ship comes with two special skills and uh, one or more passives. And again, it's just like Diablo. Each ship is different, and it could be, you know, it could be uh, like you had two similar ships, but they still have different uh, specials and passives. And uh, it just makes the game <laughs> a lot of fun because uh, every time you check out the ship dealer, there's always something new and, you know, like something that could potentially change your whole setup and make you reconsider uh, all your weapons and all your passives and all your skills, you know. So very much like Diablo and very, very satisfying. And of course, there's fast ships, there's slow ships, ships with a lot of cargo space and uh, everything in between. It's, uh, it, it's very well thought out. The game also have a background story and in the beginning it's a little bit, yeah, meh. But as you get like 10 hours into the game, it starts to pick up. And uh, compared to Starfield's, like at least the main story in Starfield, I'd actually say this story is better, more interesting, with lots more interesting characters. Uh, of course, everything happens, you know, in cutscenes and uh, you can't actually go out and talk to people and try to like influence them as you can in Starfield. But uh, I'd say the, his, the story here is actually uh, very good for uh, the kind of game. But let's just get back to uh, how you can modify your ships here, because uh, each ship can install different devices, which are, you know, things that can help you out in battle, for example. And each device, once you've upgraded it completely, will have different uh, modes of working. So there's so much customization and this is really just like scratching the surface. But uh, once it comes to uh, customization of your spaceship, there's many ways of doing it. And uh, you can change anything from paint to window tint, for example, if you like fancy a purple cockpit. And uh, you can also change the color of your um, engine exhaust, which is actually quite cool. So if you want it fire colored or green, you can do that. It doesn't matter at all. So you can really personalize your spaceship uh, actually uh, quite a bit more than uh, you can in, in Starfield, I think. Even the little LEDs around the ship, yep, you can change the color. You can also uh, find new modules out there that will change the appearance of your ship. And uh, I actually like this approach better than uh, Starfield's modular approach because this way, the ships always look cool. You don't have to really like put so much effort into trying to make them look a little bit streamlined, just like in uh, in Starfield, where you really have to <laughs> consider that a lot. 
you are of course also able to change the colors. So uh, once you get to uh, a base or you know a hideout, whatever, you can go to the shop and uh, you can buy and sell stuff. And this is a huge part of the game, actually the biggest part, because uh, you have to make sure your spaceship is in super shape. You have the best weapons, you have the best stuff, and uh, if you can't buy it, then you can craft it. And the crafting system is very good, very deep, and uh, involves quite a lot of grinding, but that's a good thing, right? So there's so many things you can craft and uh, they're all useful. There's nothing that's just for, sh for show, really. And if you find a module that you really like, you can keep it. You don't have to upgrade it all the time. You can increase its rarity, for example, or you can increase its level. Uh, or if you find a weapon that has a higher level than you're able to use at the moment, you can even remove the level restriction, which is also very much like Diablo. And then there's a whole other category called Catalysts, which kind of work like gems in Diablo, where you have, like uh, in this case, a weapon, and uh, you can then like infuse it with a catalyst that uh, makes it perform better in some way. For example, like faster reload, more range, or you know, uh, more accuracy or more damage and stuff like that. So you can really tailor everything in the game and I'm, I'm very very happy about that. I also just want to mention the trading aspect which is miles above Starfield. Because in this game it actually makes sense to fly somewhere, pick up some sort of commodity like liquor, seeds and even ramen noodles. <laughs> in this case I have earth wine that I'm selling for a sizable profit here at this station here. And that's fun, that's very satisfying and it's something that Starfield is lacking a lot. Uh, actually one of, its, one of its most weak points if you ask me. But uh, Everspace 2 has that ability. If you want to be a space trucker, you can totally do it. Just get a ship with a big cargo hold and off you go. But uh, that's not everything. Like I said, there's a lot of customization and uh, there's also the whole perks system here. So uh, it kind of works that uh, you meet different people during the game and each person that you are acquainted with uh, gives you the ability to um, invest in perks. So uh, for example, uh, mining tracker helps you determine which areas have good resources and uh, you can improve pretty much any aspect of your ship. So uh, we're getting to the end of the video here and uh, I'm kind of hoping that I get at least some people to realize what a great game Everspace 2 is and if you think Starfield is falling a little short on the whole space experience, uh, then I highly recommend you give this game a shot. It's been out on PC for a long time, but just came out on PlayStation and Xbox just a few weeks ago. So I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and see you out there.